Hey guys, uh, how are you doing? This is Sam. Welcome to this session. So today's uh, discussion, uh, it's an important one and uh, it's an interesting one. So th this can be one of the lengthiest uh, topic which we are going to cover. This is a theory session and uh, which will be you know followed by a hands-on. So EC2, uh, it stands for Elastic Compute Cloud and this is the virtual machine on the cloud offering from uh, AWS. So Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud uh, is a web service that uh, provides resizable compute capacity on the cloud. It is designed to make web scale computing easier for developers. And let me tell you this, uh, this was a revolutionary uh, game changing uh, offering from uh, AWS when they first launched uh, EC2. We never saw something like the, uh, this and uh, it, it was one of the, you know, popul it is still one of the popular uh, service offering from uh, AWS. And why so? Um, th think about this, uh, the conventional way of uh, procuring a server or a system, uh, how, how it uh, happened in a corporate. So it, it all, you know, starts with uh, requirement gathering, uh, wherein you will be, you know, analyzing the requirements. And then there is this uh, lengthy architecture uh, discussions. There is this budgeting uh, meetings. There is the procurement and uh, selection of vendors. <clears throat> then you will be you know placing the order with the vendor if you are happy with the vendor uh, quotation and all and once everything is ready uh, they will ship the package uh, with all the you know hardware components in it and uh, once it arrives the corporate office or, or uh, the company uh, where you want to you know install this uh, you will uh, end up uh, doing the assembling thing uh, you will have to assemble it and uh, once you are done with assembling uh, you will have to install or uh, add uh, this to your uh, data center and then there is this network configuration and so on. So from the beginning, uh, requirement gathering uh, till uh, the server uh, goes live, there is this uh, lengthy you know time. Uh, it takes approximately three to four months. That's the conventional way. And I know uh, it, it might even go beyond that. So over this conventional way, if you use EC2, uh, it, you can you know spin up uh, virtual machines on the cloud within minutes. And yes, you get to uh, choose your own operating system um, per your requirement. You can uh, define custom uh, RAM size. You can define uh, the hard disk drive space. And there is this uh, freedom. So that, that's all about uh, EC2. And uh, you know why it is you know, so uh, important and uh, popular. There is this instant provisioning, as I said. Within a matter of minutes, you can spin up the <coughs> virtual machines. It will be live. And uh, you get to access this in, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in a couple of minutes, it will be live uh, just like that. And then there is this auto scaling functionality. What is this auto scaling? Think about this. Uh, you have a website and uh, you are using EC2 as uh, uh, in the back, back end. So the background, uh, everything is done by EC2 instances. And suddenly all of a sudden you are uh, getting more traffic. Uh, there is this extra traffic and uh, high high load on the ec2 instances if auto scaling is enabled uh, amazon will automatically uh, understand this extra uh, traffic and it will provision uh, uh, extra ec2 instances based on uh, uh, a template and this template is known as a uh, amazon machine image or ami so we can define that uh, uh, functionality and if the demand or if the traffic goes down Amazon will automatically, um, what do you call, uh, spin down or uh, scale down your uh, extra EC2 instance. So that's a great way to, you know, cater your extra or uh, spiky traffic and uh, you can uh, save uh, money on that. So that's one of the revolutionary design, uh, auto scaling. We are going to have a, you know, lab session on that, how to achieve it in upcoming uh, sessions. The, but uh, yeah, the, you will have to understand what auto scaling is all about. And ELB, it's called as uh, elastic load balancing. We have seen it in, on, on our uh, introduction session. You can um, <coughs> um, incorporate load balancing technologies uh, with uh, EC2 instances on the cloud. And this is really, you know, low cost. That's the whole point. And then you get to, you know, scale up and scale down within a matter of minutes. And there is this uh, uh, freedom of selecting your own uh, availability zone. If uh, I mean, you can put uh, EC2 instance on any of the availability zone uh, per uh, Amazon. 
and there is this cloud watch monitoring uh, we we have seen this already on our uh, introduction sessions cloud watch uh, this provides a, a dashboard kind of uh, feature and uh, you get to monitor your ec2 instance resources you can even drill down to uh, cpu utilization uh, the uh, disk usage and so on and these are you know some of the uh, important points or uh, features of ec2 instances guys moving on uh, ec2 pricing options based on this we have got four different ec2 models or four different options the very first one it starts with uh, on demand that's what uh, we call it so on demand um, is uh, something where a user want uh, the low cost or flexibility of uh, amazon ec2 without uh, paying any up upfront cost and uh, Th this might not be a, what do you call um, a long term uh, commitment and uh, applications uh, which tend to have spiky short term or unpredictable uh, workloads uh, they tend to use this uh, on demand and uh, as you as i said uh, there is no upfront cost uh, it, it, it's like a pay per hour model uh, pay for uh, how many hour uh, you have spent on that, that that's it guys that's about uh, on demand and then there is this reserved uh, ec2 instances so reserved ec2 instances are a uh, block for a one or three year contract you will have to actually get into a contract with amazon for those kind of uh, ec2 instances and this will be for a fixed capacity of ec2 instances and this is really you know uh, cheap low cost uh, compared to uh, on demand and but what kind of you know applications will uh, use this reserved instance so if you, if you know your um, uh, applications uh, utilization or usage you can uh, predict it easily then uh, people will be you know going for this reserved instance and uh, there is this reserved capacity as well so you will have to be sure about your uh, uh, application usage uh, how much traffic you are going to expect and you should be sure about the capacity and uh, the great advantage about uh, reserved uh, instances are uh, this upfront payments you get to uh, you get to know the um, cost since you are getting into you know one or three year contract uh, it is uh, clearly mentioned uh, you can uh, see the cost associated with that uh, so people with that kind of needs they'll be you know uh, moving towards a reserved ec2 instance and then a third item it, it's it's called as spot ec2 instance and uh, so you get uh, th this is the place where you can you know bid for ec2 instance uh, if if the um, ec2 instance price that from uh, amazon it matches that bid you will be allocating uh, you will be you know getting uh, an ec2 instance allocated and uh, if the price if the standard price for uh, an instance ec2 instance it goes beyond uh, that threshold amazon will notify you and they will uh, terminate that instance <coughs> and this is for uh, uh, the applications or uh, people uh, with a you know start end date flexible start and end date and uh, as i said uh, uh, this is a uh, variable spot pricing um, and uh, this spot pricing uh, it, it is uh, based on uh, so many attributes it, it differs uh, from availability zone to availability zone it uh, it is based on the demand of ec2 instance and then then there is this region uh, uh, you know consideration as well so if uh, your bid price is you know matching that uh, spot pricing yes you will be getting an instance and if it goes beyond that amazon will uh, terminate that <coughs> so one important thing i want to tell you is this if amazon is you know terminating this uh, uh, ec2 instance uh, the spot instance they will notify you and uh, you will not be charged for uh, any partial hour that, that's one important thing so let, let's consider uh, somewhere around 10 you have got this instance and uh, 10 10 amazon is saying that okay your your bid price it was uh, uh, it is very less and uh, the spot price has gone up they'll have to terminate um, uh, the spot instance you will not be you know uh, paying a single penny uh, from 10 to 11 uh, i know you have just used uh, 10 minutes but you don't have to you know pay for 10 minutes at all but it's a different story once you decide to you know terminate it uh, uh, by all yourself and let, let's you know assume the same thing uh, somewhere around you've got the instance somewhere around 10 and 10 15 you are done with all your work and uh, you think that okay you want to you know um, terminate this 
but uh, you will have to pay for the complete hour from 10 to 11 you will have to pay uh, that's how the pricing model uh, has uh, has been <coughs> and uh, what kind of applications will be using uh, sport instances so think about this uh, whoever has a uh, uh, high computing needs and uh, something like you know um, huge uh, scale data they want to you know do some sort of analytical uh, operations on it but uh, they are you know uh, considering the cost factor those guys will be you know going for this so urgent computing uh, capacity uh, requirement and large amount of additional capacity yes uh, and um, if if they are uh, you know concerned about the cost they will be you know going for uh, spot uh, ec2 instances and finally dedicated host so dedicated host uh, the, that's a physical ec2 servers available as a paper our uh, fashion and uh, the advantage with this is uh, you will get to use existing uh, server bound licenses and uh, you can define uh, your own dedicated uh, applications or uh, you can host uh, your own applications on uh, this dedicated uh, physical ec2 instance what i want you to remember is uh, where exactly this will fit in um, think about the you know different scenarios again uh, let's start from the beginning on demand uh, that's where you uh, pay per hour there is no commitment uh, tied up with this then there is there is uh, reserved you will have to get in a uh, one or three year contract and uh, once you know the capacity once you know the uh, you know application usage you guys will be you know sticking with this and then there is spot wherein you are really concerned about the price you can uh, bid for it and uh, it, it's uh, you know suitable for uh, uh, you know uh, high capacity uh, requirements or high cap computing you know uh, requirements and then there is this dedicated uh, uh, instances and uh, this is for uh, what you call single tenant applications or dedicated uh, application hosting and coming to the next item uh, this is called as types of uh, ec2 instances there there are you know a wide variety of uh, ec2 flavors available and uh, you will uh, i mean we will talk about uh, that in a second but uh, amazon ec2 instances are generally grouped into five families first one general purpose used for uh, uh, things like you know uh, general activities uh, application server hosting and uh, so on then we have a compute op optimized for uh, analytical uh, work uh, which you might have and then there is this memory optimized for high memory uh, uh, output and then there is gpu graphical uh, uh, performance or uh, graphical oriented applications will be hosted on these kind of instances and finally we have our uh, storage optimized uh, instances um, wherein we have uh, uh, high performing db uh, hosted on 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 the instances so that's the five general uh, families and uh, what i want to tell you is this there there is this you know uh, classification something like uh, uh, d2 r4 m4 and so on but <clears throat> you don't need to necessarily know that it is a uh, it is good actually uh, they they'll never ask you about uh, these uh, in, in in the exam i've never seen it uh, so far but uh, it, it's it's really good i'm going to you know uh, drop a link on our, on um, the description section below about this so uh, i i request you to you know take a look at it as well and then uh, you know go, going back to the next thing uh, uh, it's ebs EBS stands for elastic block storage this will allow you to create uh, storage volumes and uh, attach them to EC2 instances so this is block based storage wherein you can install softwares uh, you can do you know all sort of manipulations on that and uh, you can use it for uh, storage as well and uh, EBS volumes are placed on a specific availability zone um it will be always placed in a single availability zone but uh, uh, there is this uh, replication uh, done automatically by uh, amazon just to withstand a single point of failure guys so you will have to you know remember that point as well and you cannot attach uh, uh, you know one single ebs volume to multiple ec2 instances think about uh, this as a you know typical hard hard disk or hard drive which you have got in your laptop or uh, your desktop so you cannot uh, share uh, this uh, one single ebs with multiple ec2 instances and for uh, you know uh, shared storage or uh, something like you know network storage um, nas or uh, nas you will have to go for efs elastic um, file uh, storage service 
EBS volume types we have got uh, five types of EBS volume uh, two SSD offerings and uh, then uh, three magnetic storage options are available let's see uh, what's what's they are all about so general purpose SSD it goes by the name GP2 and uh, this is used when you have this uh, uh, 10,000 IOPS requirement uh, up to you know 10,000 IOPS it can handle so what is this IOPS input output uh, operations per second that defines the you know speed and uh, yeah if, if you have this you know uh, up to 10,000 IOPS you will have to you know go for uh, general purpose SSD that's the best uh, suitable option and then a uh, provision IOPS SSD uh, it goes by the name IO1 and uh, you will have to use it when uh, your requirement goes beyond you know 10,000 IOPS if you have that kind of requirement you will have to use uh, uh, IO1 then uh, throughput optimized HDD this is a magnetic volume it goes by the name ST1 so this will be used where uh, you have this frequent access of data that kind of requirement you will have to stick with uh, ST1 and then cold HDD uh, it's again a magnetic volume and it, it goes by the name SE1 uh, this is for infrequently accessed data this is best uh, suitable for that uh, sort of you know operations and then uh, we have magnetic the standard one this is the low cost uh, infrequently accessed data and this can be used as a bootable storage as well so, so if you are you know uh, concerned about uh, the storage cost and if you want to you know keep it low you will have to stick with a uh, magnetic storage option so another thing is this uh, I'll, i want you to you know read the ec2 uh, faq section on amazon website this comes a lot in the exam uh, so it will help you to you know um, be familiarized with the concepts um, they have you know this question and the answer model you will have to be familiar with that so i request you to you know uh, read that as well i'm gonna drop this link in the description below this video and that's all i've got for now guys uh, thanks a lot for watching the video i'll see you in the next one